The following program, The Lightning Strike, is sponsored by Mohammed Fahim and to the extent applicable their guests. The views and opinions expressed therein do not necessarily reflect those of Newsweb Radio Company or its management. Get ready to be jolted out of the ordinary and into a world where conversations are charged with intensity and facts. The Lightning Strike Talk Radio with your host, Mohammed Fahim, broadcasting live from the heart of the city on Chicago's Progressive Talk Radio, WCPT 820 AM. Welcome to a radio show that charges through the airwaves with an electricity like no other. Here's your host, Mohammed Fahim. Good morning, Chicago, and welcome to the Lightning Strike. I'm your host, Mohammed Fahim. This is the Lightning Strike with Mohammed Fahim, Ken DeLuke, and John Arena. Feel free to give us a call and share your thoughts at 773-763-9278. Well, 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 that's a new jingle that we are premiering today. And thank you to Bill Shepard and his crew for writing and producing and uh, sending us uh, a copy of the jingle. Thank you, Bill. And uh, again, the number to call in, 773-763-9278. You are tuned in to The Lightning Strike on WCPT, Chicago's progressive talk radio station and the top one in the country at the moment. Right, folks? And uh, we are going to be talking a lot of stuff today, especially about the suppression of the freedom of expression, the freedom of speech, our First Amendment rights. Uh, unfortunately, some people who prefer to call themselves as uh, municipal attorneys uh, of all things, uh, Ken, yeah. have no idea about <laughs> the First Amendment. So, we are going to be diving into that as to what happened in Glendale Heights when uh, the residents wanted the village board to consider uh, voting or adding to the agenda a ceasefire resolution. What is happening in Gaza is drawing the attention of the international community. It is making us look bad as a country on the world stage. And now even the president has finally started to realize that Netanyahu is somebody who needs to be at least shut down. Controlled. That's Yahoo to you. Yeah, it's Yahoo to me. So, uh, folks, a lot of people are going up to the local villages because obviously you can't go up to the White House. Everybody can't go to the White House and ask the president to ask for a ceasefire. So people are actually going up to their local representatives, the village boards, and asking them to please put up a ceasefire resolution, which everybody knows is not is non-binding. But it is the duty of the village elders to listen to their constituents. And here is an attorney for the village of Glendale Heights who somehow was nominated to chair the board meeting. I don't know how that can happen, but it happened. And uh, his name is Mr. Peter. I don't know how to pronounce uh, his last name, but Peter, it would be great if you could call in, man. Uh, his last name is Passioni, Passion. How do you pronounce that, Ken? P-A-C-C-I-O-N-E? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like right. Okay. <laughs> so let's just call him Peter for the for the sake of brevity over here, okay? So Peter goes up and invites the people for public comment. Okay, folks, the operative word here is public comment. Now, the public have a right to comment. You don't even have to be a citizen of the of the village, a resident of the village. Uh, but here's how Mr. Peter Passioni, Passion, uh, again, I'm sorry, Peter, I'm messing up your name, but hey, I, you didn't call me up to see how to, how to pronounce your name. Uh, let's see if uh, 
uh, if Dylan could uh, please play uh, the the clip one for us. And here is Mr. Uh, Peter Passioni uh, asking, inviting the people to come in for public comment. Okay, let's listen in, folks. Is there anybody in the public that would like to address this board? Uh, come up to the podium, state your name and your address. Thank you. There, if you can uh, put a halt uh, to that. Uh, here's the thing, folks. When you go up to make a public comment, you don't have to give your address. And Mr. Municipal Attorney obviously did not know what the Open Meetings Act talks about, okay? So you don't have to give your address. Now, if you want to make a comment on this, feel free to call in, 773-763-9278. And I would love to have uh, Peter join us in this show or the next show or the show after that. Uh, it, this is worse than what happened at Orland Park, folks. This guy is threatening the people. And uh, if you can please uh, continue the, uh, the clip over there. Fantastic. For you don't have to if you now? want to. Just your name would be fine. Okay. So I've got three minutes now? Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Apologies for the misunderstanding. Uh, to the Glendale Heights Board, as a longtime member of Glendale Heights, I am honored to speak with you. I am Amanda Olson, and I am a follower of Jesus. My following of Jesus occurs within the historic peace tradition of the Anabaptists and in a concrete way at Lombard Mennonite Church. As a resident of this world, I watch with everyone and with horror at the killings of our brothers and sisters in Gaza. And I know that the killers are hurt too. One cannot kill someone else without killing part of himself. So I am horrified at the ongoing decisions our Israeli brothers and sisters are making. As they kill others, so they kill parts of themselves. Ma'am, I don't mean to interrupt you, but are we dealing with village business? Yes, that will come in about three or four paragraphs. I'm under three minutes. Well, I'm not worried about your time. I'm worried about your topic. We are not going to discuss Hamas or anything tonight. That is not village business. I'm making a ruling, according to the chair, that it is not village business. So we're not going to talk about Jesus. We're not going to talk about religion. If you want to talk about village business and what's going on in the vill village, you are free to talk. If okay. not, your time would be. Okay, so there you go, folks. Here is the village attorney taking over the meeting, calling himself as the chair. Okay, I give you that he may have been appointed as the chair by one of the uh, board members. But you can't go around shutting people up, Mr. Passioni. It is a public comment. There is nothing about village business. What do you want uh, people to talk about? Garbage pickup in the village? Is that what you're concerned about? What do you want to hear? If the people, the constituents of your village are hurting, it is their right to come up to their leadership and express their views. You cannot shut them down in a public meeting, my friend, and you screwed up. Now, not only did he screw up, folks, here he is saying, okay, do what you want. If you could please play uh, clip three for me, uh, Dylan. Anybody, anybody who disagrees with the ruling is free to file a complaint with the attorney general's office, which, which will not be. If you say so, thank you, sir. If you say so. Uh, okay. So. No. If I say so. To yeah. make sure there we go that uh, didn't yeah, that sorry part. so uh, I was off uh, up mic for a, for a second over there folks but here's Mr. Peter Passioni saying that if you want to file a complaint with the Attorney General's office feel free to do it so I encourage all our listeners to file a complaint against Mr. Peter Passioni the village attorney for Glendale Heights for suppression of First Amendment rights in a public meeting folks this is serious. We cannot let people like this take away our rights in a public meeting. And you're welcome to call in with your comments, 773-763-9278. You're tuned in to the lightning strike Sunday mornings. It is 
lightning strike with Mohammed Fahim, Kendaluk, and John Arena. John Arena is not in the studio with us today. He'll be joining us uh, in the forthcoming shows over there. Uh, on that, I think, uh, hey, uh, my good friend Phil from the north side is always with us. And uh, this is the guy who stood up, by the way, by not coming into the studio. Never going to forget about it, Phil. Good morning. You are, <laughs> you are, you are. You're never going to let me live this. I'm no, telling you, man. <laughs> okay. Now, here's the problem, Phil. You were supposed Great. to bring the donuts, okay? So we're upset for that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Uh, so, Phil, oh an, a village attorney telling people that they cannot talk about Gaza or Jesus or anything else that are bothering them, how do you take it, man? Um, I, see, this is where, now, who who is this, uh, I'm going to say Passion, maybe, pa Passion? Yeah, I don't who know how to pronounce his last name. Who side is he on, though? I, I don't, is, is he a Trump guy? Is, is he representing Democrats? I, well, I, I, think, uh, I think he's a... Uh, I think he's representing Netanyahu, okay? I mean, he does not want people to talk about uh, Jesus. He does yeah. not want people to talk yeah. about Gaza. He does not want people to talk about human rights. Oh. All he wants is for people to talk about village business. Uh, yeah, how do you, you define know, village business, my friend? Uh, uh, you know, yeah, let me say, too, um, you know, the, uh, Biden had some protesters. Uh, I believe it was in New York, I think, about a week ago. And even Biden said, let them speak. They have a point. Gaza needs more help. You know, I mean. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, so I, I'm, I don't know, you know, who, whose side is this guy on? It, it's hard for, for me to kind of really um, take a, you know, I, I don't well, know. I, think, I, I, I don't think it's. I'm uh, speechless. I can't believe anyone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Would, 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 it, that, that's. Uh, right, you would think Amendment. an attorney would understand the First Amendment. You would think that. Oh, also, yeah. Here, let me say, too, what kind of clues me in here. The fact that he's demanding people uh, uh, give their their address, their place, where, yeah. where they live, yeah. kind of say, it kind of sounds Trumpy. <laughs> it's kind of like, we're, you know, it's a little threatening. That's kind of like where I live, you know, with these people are, you know, yeah, yeah they, they're, uh, I'm, I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna say um, that that is very seems very pro-Israel to me, which is a that pro Netanyahu, let's say. And well, that's here's a, a the real thing. Uh, here's the thing, uh, Phil. What is happening is we the the world is laughing at us. Okay, and we we wake up to the sound. I I saw this uh, this billboard while coming into the studio this morning. It says. Uh, we wake up to the sound of our alarm clocks while children in Gaza are wake, uh, waking up to the sound of bombs. Such a sad yeah, commentary, I mean, man. I, I, it's a horrible situation, and I really, I mean, we've also got Ukraine going on. Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I just don't want this to become a one-issue um uh, election. It, 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 well, I, I hope so. I uh, hope so. I uh, try, to, try to stress. Yep, I it, hope so. It, and I feel circles, let's let's put it this way. Can I say it real quick? Please. Uh, let's say a, a quick hypothetical situation. Charlie Manson was still alive and he got uh, released from prison and he's on parole. Who who says I'm not really a Charlie Manson guy? Who you know the but Charlie as a conservative represents my values a lot better. than <laughs> Joe Biden does. Who, who's gonna you know what I'm saying? It, it's like it, we have Biden or we have Charlie Manson. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. saying you're you're gonna support Trump over Biden on any issue. It's like saying, well, you know, Charlie Manson kind of represent you know supports my values a lot better oh, yeah. than the same oh, person yeah. does. Right? Can I put that's Pretty good scenario. Yeah. Hey, Phil, I, I appreciate your your sentiments here. Um, now, this is really important, and like, you need to share this with everyone that's in your uh, universe. Go out there and talk to the people who don't really follow politics. You follow it, I follow it, Muhammad follows it, so we're like into this whole thing. But the um, 
the Republican Party has had this like talking point Fox News uh, platform well, that they've yeah. been brainwashing everybody for many, many years. See, we need to I'm go out and first. reach out to people and let them know that exactly. they have to vote in their own best interests, okay? I'm trying to point out last week how, how your buddy, uh, the, the guitar dude, how kind of crazy that sounds to me, man. It's, you know, honestly, okay. it's like, uh, I know I know Manson's done heinous things. He's a bottom and a evil but. You know, he represents my conservative values a lot better than mine does. Okay, <laughs> Phil, uh, thank you uh, so much uh, for listening, for calling in. If you got a a slate full of people calling in. So thank you, Phil, and uh, we, let's see. Oh, our friend Bill Shepard is uh, calling in. Bill, thank you so much for the jingle, man. That sounded good. How did you come up with that idea, Bill? Well, I appreciate that. That was actually uh, our bass player, John, did the synthesizers and uh, uh, put the bass parts in, and, and we just went in and recorded did some uh, recording at John's house and mine. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Put it together. I am pretty sure that's walk- trending right now on TikTok, so we should be getting like about a million more <laughs> listeners here for next week's show. So thank you so much for that. Uh, again, Bill, uh, uh, thank you. And if you could uh, hold on and uh, give us an update on what's happening on the music scene in Chicago. Chicago a little bit later on. That will be wonderful. And again, uh, folks, uh, you are listening to the Lightning Strike. We come every Sunday morning. And if you could please support our show, that would be awesome. As you can see, we don't uh, take too much uh, you know, paid advertising over here because this is the show of the people, by the people, for the people, for you guys, right? So please go to our website, tlschicago.com. And uh, you will see that there is a donate button over there. If you want to keep uh, us, uh, support us, you can make a small donation to keep the show going. And uh, we come here every Sunday morning for you, rain or shine or snow. And Dylan manages the boards for us, and he's always smiling and giving me the thumbs up. I, I don't know why he does that, but he's uh, also multitasking when when we have the show going on. So the number to call in, 773-763-9278. Our person of the week is going to be Lynn Shaw, and we're going to be spending a lot more time with Lynn today. Uh, Lynn is uh, with a organization that she started called Lynn's Warriors, and Lynn's Warriors raises awareness and educates the communities about the escalation of human trafficking and sexual exploitation happening in our own homes and communities. And uh, Lynn has got stories that will blow you away, okay? The, uh, her organization intervenes to prevent new victims and helps eradicate human trafficking through discussion, digital safety education, coming on radio shows like this. And Lynn's Warriors is committed to ending human slavery and sexual exploitation, okay? So uh, stay tuned. Lynn would be joining us at uh, about 9.35, 9.40, all the way from New York. York, and um, this is a segment that you don't want to miss. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back after this. Hey folks, did you know there's a program in Illinois that if you qualify for it, would allow you to get solar installed in your home at no out-of-pocket cost? The benefit to you would be a reduction of your electric bill, possibly as high as 30 to 50 percent, and more importantly, you would take out the uncertainty of almost guaranteed future price increases imposed from your electric company. If you'd like to see if you can qualify for this program, call Kendall Luke at 312-617-8979. That's 312-617-8979. Help us save the environment and change that electric bill burden. Are you a business looking for the right talent or a job seeker searching for your dream career? Look no further than the Center for Strategic Solutions, your workforce solution experts. Our experienced team at the Center for Strategic Solutions is dedicated to connecting employers with top-tier talent and helping job seekers find opportunities that truly align with their goals. We're more than just consultants. We're your partners in success. Ready to take your workforce to the next level or land that ideal job? Contact the Center for Strategic Solutions today at 1847 306 9274 or visit us online at www.cfssus.com. 
the Center for Strategic Solutions, your bridge to a brighter future in the Windy City. The number to call is 847-306-9274 or send an email to info at cfssus.com. That is info at cfssus.com. Welcome back to the Lightning Strike with Mohammed Fahim. Folks. All right, um, this is WCPT. Our phone number is 773-763-9278. Uh, please give us a call and share your thoughts. Okay, folks, and uh, the lightning strikes catch it in a bottle. What, what a uh, crazy kind of uh, thing that Bill came up with. Very catchy, Bill. Thank you again. And uh, we've got uh, Kamran calling in, and uh, Kamran is, uh, is our guest of the week also. And uh, Kamran is doing a phenomenal job with a nonprofit, which is called as Nasiha. And uh, let's get to hear from uh, Kamran as to what Nasiha is and what's happening and why Nasiha. Kamran, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. You are on WCPT on the lightning strike. Mohammed, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. So, uh, Nasiha. That, that, that song is, is, is actually pretty catchy. <laughs> I, I do like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're going to be uh, cleaning it up a little bit. Uh, this was something that Bill just put together and... Uh, he sent it out to us uh, yesterday and said, okay, fine, let's uh, test it out. Okay. So, uh, Nasiha, what is it? What do you guys do? Why do you do it? Question. Um, so, uh, it's, a, it's a helpline for, really, to call in. Okay. If having any issues with any mental health events. So, that might be depression, anxiety, uh, suicide, addictions, whatever anybody may want to call in about, uh, they can call us. Uh, now, it's an anonymous uh, helpline, so we don't track who, who you are, and you probably don't even know who we are. But what happens is this allows a more conversation. It is far more clean. It's a helpline that you can do over the phone or through text started this almost 20 years ago in Canada, and it was really designed after, after 9-11, um, primarily Muslim, a Muslim audience, because what was happening was a lot of young Muslims were, ha- were struggling with their faith. Okay. But this, this 9-11 moment has happened, bullied at school, beat up, I really understand why, and I don't understand, you know, is it because of my faith? Is it because of my name? Because of the color, you know, the color, the color of my skin? Like, what is it? So they dealt with anxiety. They dealt with depression. They didn't have an outlet because they would go to their therapist, and the therapist may not be able to, you know, help them with their spiritual needs. They go to the imam or the mosque. The mosque couldn't address their mental health needs. Mm-hmm. needed a space. There needed to be a space in the middle that could address both. And that's when this Nasiha started. We originally started with only a couple of hours a day, every day. Okay. And so, fast uh, uh, to, Cameron, right? if people want to reach out to Nasiha, what is the number that uh, they should be calling in? One Diha. N S. Sorry, could you uh, could you could you repeat it? You're you're kind of dropping off. Sorry about that. It's one eight six six Nasiha. S A. Okay, N A six. N A S E E H A. Right. Okay, so you're, you're kind of uh, cutting in and out. I think uh, we may have a bad connection going with you. But one eight six six N A S E E H A is the number to call in if you need some help, folks. And the website is again N A S 
e e h a dot o r g uh, so kamran since this war started in the middle east now i don't even call it a war man this is a massacre by one side okay so let's not call it a war um, we got our uh, co-host john arena also joining us from indiana where he's visiting so we'll bring john in in just a second but since this uh, massacre started has uh, the number of uh, calls gone up for you guys it has mom it's gone up almost 600% Wow. And so what ends up happening the num the types of calls that we're getting are from uh who are saying hey look I it might be somebody who is going through a divorce they've got uh two kids at home they've become a single mother but their family's also in Gaza. Mhm. And all of a sudden you've got these complex compound issues. We've had people call in saying that they feel guilty month of uh Ramadan that they have food on their tables and the people in Gaza are suffering and they're dying every day. Okay. And people call in students who can't sleep, who can't study because these these images are embedded in their minds and they can't get them out. Folks, uh, we are getting more and more calls. Yeah, the number to call in is 18666273342 and we will be uh pronouncing or announcing this uh, in our upcoming shows also this is a very critical service that is being provided by this non-profit organization please visit their website nasiha n a s e e h a dot o r g and donate to support this worthy cause kamran thank you so much for calling in uh, we got to go on to other subjects today but uh, we will be in touch and thank you again for your service Hey John Arena's on the line from uh, Indianapolis and John I was wondering if um I want to be there for the eclipse with you is there any chance you can lend me your tour bus to take <laughs> me over there tomorrow Hey oh, no. Oh, no. tour bus tour bus is already down here Oh, oh damn. damn oh shoot John now you tell us man we've been wondering what happened to John okay <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey, uh, uh, stick on. We got Dave from Hoffman Estates calling in. Dave wants to comment about uh, President Biden and Gaza. Dave, uh, good morning. Thank you for listening in from Hoffman Estates. I believe that in the village of Hoffman Estates, also Dave, there is a, a proposal to add a ceasefire resolution to the village board uh, meetings. And I don't know if you are aware of that or not. Not at first. I've heard of it. Tell you the truth, but. Um on uh, just an observation of my own here now with this stuff uh, with president biden and, and with this gaza where he, on one side he's phone deaf and uh he needs to take off the blinders because uh if you recall there was another president who did a lot of great stuff and um and being president johnson mm -hmm. who, you know what and vietnam was his downfall that time when nobody loved politics more than Lincoln Johnson, but he finally they got to where he was not, you know, he said no more. Well, yeah. Dave, uh, thank you, uh, thank you for your comment. And uh, everybody is wondering what is keeping Biden from picking up the phone and saying, "Hey, Yahoo, enough of the CRAP, and stop it. We are going to just cut the funding off for whatever that you are doing." But uh, you know, Biden talks about ceasefire on one end, and then on the other end, they turn around and they send 2.5 billion dollars worth of you know 2,000 pound bombs and all kinds of armaments. What are we, what are we saying? What are we doing, folks? We need to hold our president and our administration accountable okay they come up with this uh, strange thing that oh yeah but trump is going to be worse yeah but right now trump is in the future this is the present what is our president doing and that is the question that i have okay i mean to respond to that i mean he had a big conversation with yahoo um, like two days ago, yeah. And, what happened? Uh, basically, he laid down the law to him, saying that we're going to cut everything from yeah. Israel if you don't like. You yeah, know, and so what happens online. now? So I mean, he is actually being very proactive at the moment. I, I, doing that. Yeah, and, and what did it, what did it take for him? It took the killing of seven people of World's Kitchen of different nationalities, including three Britishers and one U.S. citizen, 
seven brazen killings by the Israeli armed forces for Biden to finally sit up and take notice. And meanwhile, you've got 34,000 people that have been killed already with our bombs, Ken. I don't take that, okay? Biden should get up, take responsibility. He's putting us, uh, making us look bad. I'm so sorry, but that is what it is. So, uh, Mr. Arena, what do you have to say on that, sir? So, I mean, I, I think, you know, you guys both have good points. And I was a little disappointed in, you know, Biden wasn't more forceful in terms of, like, there, he's saying, you know, if we don't see changes, we're going to we're going to change policy. Yep. Follow up in the read that Netanyahu is making some policy changes and they're holding back on, into Rafa and rethinking that approach. Well, he, 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 here's the thing, John. Here's the thing. OK, uh, anytime that we talk about it, people say that, oh, Israel has the right to defend itself. Oh, yeah, of course, Israel has the right to defend itself on its own territory, okay? According to Article 51 of the UN Charter, my friend, if you are an occupying force, you are not defending yourself. You are forcing yourself on a population that has no recourse, okay? So don't give me that thing about, oh, Israel has the right to defend itself. I grant you, yes. But if you are attacked on your own territory, in your own defense, you can do it. But you have been there in Gaza for the last, what, 60, 70 years now? Yeah. Imposing your will on people? That is not defense. And I'm sorry, I don't take that. Okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And it's an order of magnitude. I mean, we're talking 300,000 or 30,300 people who have been killed in Gaza compared to... You know, what was it, uh, 300 people, you know, the Israelis that, you know, were attacked initially. So, I mean, this is like not even close to being equitable, and it should change. So Okay, uh, so uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, everyone, for listening in. I did get a message from one of our listeners that we are having some uh, technical difficulties with the broadcast today, with uh, the broadcast cutting in and out. And I think it may be uh, the, the callers calling in that are cutting in and out. I don't think that uh, our feed is uh, getting uh, in and out, right? So our feed is fine. Um, okay. We can see it back on the monitor right there. It depends on how they're listening to it. So if they're listening to okay. it, so, uh, the it internet, could be uh, where, where you are. You know, this, this darn solar eclipse is st starting, to, I mean, <laughs> starting to mess with us, starting today. Uh, but uh, we have got uh, uh, Sheila White joining us to introduce our person of the week. And our person of the week is uh, Lynn Shaw. But before we go to Lynn and Sheila, Bill, real quick, man, what is happening in the music scene in Chicago? Hey, uh, Muhammad, we got uh, a band coming here close by the south side here. If you're familiar with that new CD and me, I'll be there watching them. I'm a Stones fan. It's a Stones tribute band called Rocks Off. Uh, their website is Rocks Off tribute.com uh it's uh ten dollars i'm surprised there's tickets still available but if you're out south and you like the rolling stones these guys look like them and sound like them mm -hmm. uh, a lot cheaper and a lot easier to get in and it's a great venue wonderful thank you do you know you so the address of cd and me by chance and if not that's okay yeah. people can look it up but year old the grange road in frankfurt i'm sorry say that again you got cut off uh sure it's two three three two zero the grange road uh, Frankfurt, Illinois. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Bill. And Bill is our music correspondent, folks, for the show and uh, our musical director with uh, all kinds of things that are going to be coming up shortly. And by the way, if uh, you need something... Um or you need a great band. Bill is like a phenomenal musician. He did our jingle. Um, you know, reach out to us and, you know, maybe we can have him uh, perform for for whatever event that you guys have coming up. Yeah, and up. we'll bring him live into the studio one of these days with his guitar. Okay. Uh, Sheila, good morning. <laughs> Thank you so, so thank much you, uh, for uh, for joining us, uh, Sheila White, uh, introducing our person of the week. And again, if you are listening in, folks, the number to call in, 773-763-9278. We're going to be spending a little bit more time on our person of the week today. Lynn Shaw is with Lynn's Warriors, and there are things happening in our country that you need to be aware of. And on WCPT, we always say facts matter. So let us talk facts. Sheila, good morning. 
Good morning, Mohammed. Good morning, Ken. This is so exciting today. The topic that we're discussing is a problem not only in the Chicago area and the big cities like New York, but it's a global problem. Sex trafficking, human trafficking is a big problem. And our guest today, our person of the week, can really pull back the blanket, pull back the curtain of what's going on in these larger cities with the government, Homeland Security. So, Lynn, tell us a little bit about Lynn's Warriors and what you all are doing with this uh, situation. Good morning. I am calling all of you, my warrior friends in the Chicago area. First of all, thank you for covering this critical and crucial issue that your listeners, the public, must know about. Lynn's Warriors, bottom line, education raising awareness, sharing facts, not fears, and giving the public easy resources that they can use and take actions to affect change in each and every community across the United States. So, Lynn, uh, uh, good morning. Uh, This is Mohammed, and I've got uh, Ken DeLuke in the studio with me. John Arena, our other co-host, is actually out of the studio calling in from... uh, uh, somewhere on the other side of the world, I guess, because his signal keeps on dropping. Um, when did Lynn's Warriors get started? What was, what was the impetus? What got you into this, Lynn? Mohammed, let, let, let me share with you. My whole background is the <laughs> entertainment business. And uh, long story short, I was working with a client writing a book about domestic violence about five years ago. In doing the research and working with her, The research intersected with human trafficking happening in the United States. I did not realize, again, being aware, but thinking it's happening in Thailand, Philippines, all these faraway places. When I found the research showing it is happening in our own backyards, I sat up and said to myself, I cannot allow this. I cannot not be part of this. I must get out there. It was almost like I had a calling, like this mm-hmm. light bulb went off, and I decided to devote myself to educating everybody about what is happening in the United States. Although a global problem we know about, we have to start right in our home bases, in our homes, in our towns, cities, rural areas. And I said, you know what? I'm going to form a nonprofit. I'm going to go out there and preach. Anybody who will listen to me, I am going to intervene and and help people understand this most horrific, horrible thing happening and escalating. Just now, since we started talking, Nine more children have been sex trafficked. That is how the stats work. So Lynn, it's time for all of us Lynn, Lynn to let me ask you a it. quick question here. Now, I sure. understand that uh, human trafficking is an issue and it's out there, but uh, myself, I never thought of it as being an epidemic, uh, you know, type of uh, problem. What are the actual numbers um, that you know of that are, you know, of people involved in this uh, this problem? First of all, we've had the same stats thrown out from our government for the last several years. It will always be 50 million people worldwide are trafficked. So we know it's an old stat already. It's much more. Mm-hmm. We'll also always be told it's a $150 billion global business. No, it can't be because that was the same stat thrown out there five years ago. When I talk to all of the experts that we are colleagues with, because we not only are based in New York City, we work on the federal level as well, I get the same answer. Well, Lynn, we really don't know. We really don't know. So let's just say it is bigger than the drug trafficking trade, bigger than weapons trafficking trade. It is easier, easier to traffic a child, a person, than it is to get involved in all of those other criminal type of things. So now, uh, Lynn, if we are talking about uh, cross-border trafficking, can you throw some light on it? Uh, what, are, what are the implications of it? What is happening across our borders also? Um, it throws some light. I'm throwing a lightning strike across it, not, not, <laughs> not to have a pun out there. We have got to wake up. Our hashtag at the Warriors is community creates change. This is the biggest criminal enterprise, sex trafficking, labor trafficking, weapon trafficking, drug tra- all of it going on our complicit U.S. government with the criminal cartels. It is a well-oiled machine, well-organized. We've got NGOs working on our American, the border, on our side, raking in millions upon millions of dollars. These NGOs are from 
whether it's Catholic charities, we have every type of church. I don't want to just pick on them. You know, we, we have uh, synagogues, we have Muslim, we have everything, Seventh-day Adventists, raking in the millions. It is a money-making operation. And what is happening, and this is what I want everybody to understand, everybody is not hearing this. Once these poor people, let's put aside politics for just a second. I know that's hard for everybody to do. Okay. Let's just think about the humanitarian crisis going on right now. If I was a mom in one of these poor countries and I heard, come here, I'll give you food, I'll give you a roof, your kids will be educated, you make a few dollars, I come here too. We'd all come here, right? Mm -hmm. But here is what's happening. These people are paying untold sums of money, could be 5000 could be $10,000 to come here cartels are organizing it once they get here and this is why i want everybody to listen very carefully right now these people are put into something called debt bondage i do not hear any of our american media talking about this at all what is debt bondage debt bondage is an unending cycle of you owe the cartels for the rest of your life and this is what these poor vulnerable people who are coming here do not understand. Not only are they put into this debt bondage, which means they will continually, living in America, oh, have to pay the cartels. Mm -hmm. And their families back home will be attached to this. They'll also be responsible for those who came here. Now, what does that mean, debt bondage? That means women, girls, men and boys too, how are they going to make the money? How are they going to pay back? They're going to be put into sex trafficking labor trafficking. Untold women are now being forced to work in strip clubs. It is horrific. And don't get me started on the demand is children. I'm going to leave it there for a minute because I want everybody to think about this debt bondage. People are not just being delivered here. They are now forced. It is slavery, human slavery. Slavery is a better word than trafficking because in the United States today, not only for Americans and all of these, I call them illegal aliens because we want people to come here legally, not illegally. They are being forced into slavery. Biggest amount of slavery than ever in the United States and nobody in the media dares talk. They don't talk about the debt bondage. They don't talk about the impact on each and every community. Chicago, I feel like Chicago, with all due respect, is has been for the last several years the forgotten area, right? The moms and grandmas that reach out to me and say about the gun violence and our children and help us. And now your influx right in your community. Let's bring it home to you. What is going on with, it's reported, 35,000 have been put into the Chicago area of these illegal aliens. No. No, I dare say the number's probably double. We're never getting the correct stats. Uh, I'll leave it there for a second because there's so much to talk about this, but we must start disrupting these cycles and become warriors. You know what, Lynn? Lynn what uh, about the uh, Homeland Security? What are they doing? Homeland Security and some of these organizations at the government that. level. Um, let's talk about that. I mean, they, are they aware of how bad this is and, you know, what's going on? Let's be real, because that's what we have to share. Facts, right? Mm -hmm. Homeland yeah. Security. Now, the Warriors, we work. We get our information from law enforcement. They work for the government, Homeland Security. So think about it. Think about it. When they are being advised, these people, you know, let them come in. The people are coming in, and let's take it even further. ICE, for instance, in New York City. Uh, can can go and look for these people, but our own NYPD, our law enforcement, cannot hands off touch. So everybody talks about, and there is media that constantly talks about uh, certain media. It is so bad. Okay, we all know, you know, I know, this is bad. But they are not being allowed by the current administration to take appropriate actions to protect us as Americans or to protect these vulnerable people coming in by the tens of millions. And so what are we going to do? Because this is happening and there really seems to be no stopping in sight. Let's take it further. What are we, we going to do as individuals to make it better for us and our communities? And that's where we have to kind of stay in our lanes right now, separate it out. Because unfortunately, and I don't like telling you this, it is not getting better. It is only getting worse at the border. Lynn, let me ask you a question. Where are you getting your statistics from to, uh, you know, quote the numbers that you're quoting, and I'm, I'm just curious. I'm not, you know, being ever, you know, 
adversarial. I just oh, don't, I don't want to understand where that's coming from. Uh, NYPD, Homeland Security, National Center on Sexual Exploitation. There's various colleagues of ours that put out all of these studies. Shared Hope International. We Everything we say can be backed up by a study. Okay, folks, uh, we got uh, Lynn Shaw with Lynn's Warriors on the line with us uh, from New York. So, Lynn, this whole thing about uh, sanctuary cities, for example, okay, there is a lot of emphasis on uh, sanctuary cities, Chicago being one of them. Is there a money trail there that is leading to these people continuing to offer sanctuary to the illegal aliens that are coming in? I would say that is the bottom line, the money trail. Where is all the money, okay? We don't even have time to discuss all this because here in New York City, I see young women, they could be teenagers, they could be in their early 20s, one can't tell, sitting on sidewalks holding babies out saying, help me, feed us. And they are housed in one of these, uh, you know, hotels here in New York City. Why don't they have the food that we're told our taxes are paying for that food? Right? Mm -hmm. Why are different sources of mine around New York City reporting to me, can be doormen, can be law enforcement, that these women living in these family hotels that, again, our taxes are paying for, our government tells us about these safe havens for these people, okay? Why are these women now in the middle of the night being paraded out of these hotels and uh, witnesses are saying they're seeing them in cars, you know, having sex? I hate to be so, uh, you know, crass almost on a Sunday morning show, these are the truths happening. It's all about the money. There is no accounting for money. There is no accountability. And I want to point something out. You know, I sit here in the middle of New York City, the home of the United Nations. What are they doing to help any people or talk about this? They are doing nothing. Where are all the women's groups to come together? And I'm talking bipartisan. This is not about politics. This is a humanitarian crisis mm -hmm. that affects Everybody, where are all these women's groups to come together and say, our women and girls, we're not going to allow this. If these people are brought here, because, you know, we have to get them out of their horrible countries to come here. And you know what these people also report? They really do think these streets in America are lined with gold. And then they get here, and it's chaos. That is what is happening. I can talk about my city, New York, happening. I know a lot about your city, Chicago, happening. These people are put here. We know it's for political reasons. There is no stopping in sight. We should all be demanding as citizens, as hard as it sounds or seems, where mm -hmm. is the money going? Point it out to us. Hold our elected officials accountable. That goes for Republicans. That goes for Democrats. That goes for the Biden administration. The number one issue on everybody's lips right now, and they should be screaming from a box from wherever they live, stand on top and scream, is we want these borders closed. We want accountability because think of it as a big wheel with a lot of spokes. How, what this whole open border leads to, all of the crime, all of the money, national security risk. How about all of the drugs flowing in? Drugs, fentanyl is poison, it's not a drug, it's the poisoning of America, a very well-orchestrated campaign that is flowing into, let me just point one thing out, our American school systems now, middle and high schools, all 50 states, the cartels have infiltrated. They are working to get our American children to deal their fentanyl and to also traffic, peer-to-peer -peer trafficking, in middle and high schools. So this open border leads to all kinds of criminality. This is the tip of the iceberg. We have seen nothing yet. Well, folks, uh, we got uh, Lynn Shaw from Lynn's Warriors uh, uh, from the, on the air with us uh, from New York. Uh, Lynn, thank you so much for pointing this out. And her organization is Lynn's Warriors, and the website is Lynn's Warriors. That is L-Y-N-N-S warriors.org thank you again uh, for joining us uh, Lynn it was a pleasure to have you and we will continue the conversation uh, in uh, some upcoming shows also we are at the end of our rope today on the lightning strike and again uh, Sheila thank you so much for bringing in great guests folks if you would like to be featured as a guest on the show please go to our website which is tlschicago.com. That is TLS for the Lightning Strike Chicago.com. Send us a request to the website and we will be happy to host you as a guest on the show to talk about issues that keep you up at night. With that, uh, John Arena, 
you are back on my friend we have got a a a, a bad connection with you john can you hear me okay yeah and you can kind of uh, you're cutting in and out yeah well i'm in a field in noblesville indiana so it might be a little bit uh lower speed here I think that is what the issue is. It's not so much on on our our end over here. Now, uh, John, I hear Noblesville is uh, beautiful this time of year. Is that based on a true story? It's actually gorgeous. We've got uh, supposed to have weather in the six of the eclipse. Okay. And uh, Edward Green uh, sent a tweet out saying that if everybody repents up the earthquakes and the eclipse, well, I'm just hoping that. We repent a little bit and I get to still get to see the eclipse before, uh, tomorrow <laughs> okay. at 3. Wonderful, John. Go ahead and uh, do your repentance in the field, my friend. Thank you so much for calling in. And when are you coming back to Chicago? Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday morning. Wonderful. So we'll see you uh, next week in the studio. If we are still in the studio by then, we are thinking of going remote next week, uh, based on uh, you know the solar eclipse happening tomorrow. Folks, uh, if you would like to call in again, we got a couple of minutes that we can take your phone calls: seven seven three seven six three nine two seven eight or seven six three WCPT is the number to call in. You're tuned in to the Lightning Strike every Sunday morning. We are here from nine to ten, and then. Uh, of course you can catch us on our website after the show is over tlschicago.com ken yeah i want to share something with you um i'm going to be turning 65 by the end of the month and something i didn't realize until just very recently is that there's a a program when you go on medicare first of all it starts the first day of the month that your birthday is on so i kind of lucked out i got a free month of uh, medicare because <laughs> okay. my birthday's on the 29th so but what they have is something called um, silver sneakers where you can literally go to any health club around and get in for free so i uh, back in the day before covid i was working out uh, six days a week basically i went from 289 pounds down to 220 pounds and now uh, I'm getting back on that bandwagon again. Oh, so boy. anyone who's yet the same age I am, check it out and like let's go. Uh, you know, help yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, the silver sneakers is a, is a great program to be on, and and you should you should see Ken in the studio, folks. Phil, you missed meeting Ken in the studio, my friend. Uh, the six pack that he has. I'm telling you, that six-pack is covered by a barrel. Okay, and I'm point. strong like bull. <laughs> okay. So, uh, again, folks, we started off the day with talking about the suppression of our First Amendment rights by the village attorney in Glendale Heights. They're going to be having another board meeting. Feel free, go to the Glendale Heights Village Board website and check out when the next village board meeting is. Show up over there and show them that the power belongs to the people, not some self-appointed chairman or whatever of uh, the, the board at the, at the moment saying, oh, give me your name and your address if you want to make a public comment. Come on there, Peter Passion, man, pass it on, okay? Don't try to rub down on people just because you're sitting up there as the village attorney. And with that uh, note, folks, again, uh, our website is tlschicago.com for the lightning strike, chicago.com. Feel free to go to our website, show your support, and we'll see you back here next Sunday in the morning again from 9 to 10. This is Mohammed Fahim and Ken DeLuke in John Arena signing off on the lightning strike on WCPT, Chicago's progressive talk radio station. Ciao. The preceding program, The Lightning Strike, was sponsored